What's up guys? Today I've got a little home theater upgrade in the works. I'll be replacing my Panamax M5300 power conditioner with the Furman IT Ref 15i power filter slash conditioner and the SPR 20i voltage regulator. I want that electric to be nice and steady. But before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, we cover all things audio and video. New movies, new AV equipment. So if you're not a subscriber, then tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. First one we'll be taking a look at is the Reference 15i. This retails for $27.59 at the time of this video, and it has been out a few years now. Inside, we get the power cord, the cage that secures the power cable to keep it from getting loose, rack ears, some screws, and some documentation. The SPR20i voltage regulator comes with the same set of accessories. A 20 amp power cord with cage, rack mount hardware, and some documentation. The SPR20 retails for about $2,200 at the time of this video. Taking a closer look at the pair, with the reference 15i on the bottom, it features a switched outlet up front next to the extreme voltage LED indicator and LED status light in the center. The SPR20, which is on top, has a voltage slash current button which changes the LED readout which is located in the center. There's also LED indicators for protection and extreme voltage warnings. On the right side of each, you'll find the power switches. They kind of feel like mini breakers. Around back are the AC inputs with the SPR20 supporting a 20 amp line. There's also protection for your standard telephone jack. Unfortunately, no ethernet. And there's coax ins and outs. Starting with the SPR20 up top, there are four outlets for audio components like subwoofers and receivers. The other eight outlets, along with stable power, provide AC noise filtering that's supposed to clean up RF and EMI noise. The SPR20 is a voltage regulator, so its main job is to keep a constant flow of 120 volts so you're not getting dips that could potentially affect audio and video quality. Now the reference 15i, which is on the bottom, has the same ins and outs on the far right. There are four high current outlets for amplifiers and receivers. These four outlets will have an excess of 4 amps of continuous current reserve or 55 amps peak charge. This will keep your amplifiers from running out of steam on big dynamic peaks, as there is a pretty big toroid in this to store all that energy, hence the 50 pound weight. There's also four linearly filtered outlets for AV equipment and two discrete symmetrical power outlets. These feature total isolation between the filtered high current outlets and the isolated symmetrical AC power outlets. Per their specs, this positively breaks noise-inducing ground loops, hum bars, and power supply backwash. It's recommended you hook up your video sources like Blu-ray player, TV, or projector to these. It'll keep the picture noise-free. Of course, all the outlets will provide some sort of conditioning and surge protection. Size-wise, they both measure 4 inches high by 17 inches wide by 15.6 inches deep. The SPR20 weighs 31 pounds, whereas the Reference 15i weighs 50 pounds. So they are both pretty heavy units. Now if you plan on mounting these in your rack, they do come with mounting hardware. You'll have to remove the three screws up front. Line up the rack ears, which is contoured to give it a custom look, and screw them in using the longer included screws. Now let's get them installed. Both these units are a standard 2RU height without the feet. I always screw them in in a crisscross pattern. Once they're in, aside from looking pretty, the only thing you can do is change the meter on the SPR to show incoming voltage or output current by pressing the button. All right, now I've got no means to show you how the surge protection can work, except maybe pray for a tropical storm to hit Connecticut, but I do have this little device by Entech. It's a wideband power line noise analyzer. If I plug this directly into the wall outlet, it'll show you how much noise is in your line. Now what I've heard is that AM radio frequencies, since it's amplitude modulation, charges over power lines, so you might be getting radio stations through your outlets and not even know it. This will definitely affect your audio, so let's find out.
No surprise, there's a ton of noise. Things like cell phone chargers, your Wi-Fi, your television, audio components, your appliances turning on and off can all attribute to not having the cleanest power. Also, when turning things on and off, it can introduce spikes and dips in your power as well. That's where the SPR20 voltage regulator comes into play, to keep a steady, constant flow of clean power. Now, if we plug the analyzer into the Furman SPR first, it's drastically cleaner. Keep in mind, I have the sensitivity knob all the way to the max. This is a worst case scenario. The readings that showed up in the audio components bank read 64. The second set of banks, the audio and video bank, read 44. And the video components bank gave a reading of 36. So each set of banks get a little quieter. Now plugging the analyzer into the REF 15i, the high current outlets gave a reading of 1, which is crazy good. The linearly filtered banks read 22, and the discrete symmetrical outlets read 3. Now, when I plug the 15i into the SPR, I end up with the high current outlets reading 0.9. The linearly filtered ones are 22, which is the same as before, and the discrete symmetrical outlets read 2.4. So that's a little quieter as well. So having these two pieces together gives you that constant power and also gives you a little extra conditioning. Okay, now I just want to show you what I get in another part of my home. This is actually in my bedroom. And when I say that you can hear AM radio in your lines... Well, if this isn't a good enough reason for power conditioners, then I don't know what is. As far as what it does for my system's performance, the only thing that I can really say is that I have noticed that the noise floor is quieter for sure. Not that there was a lot of hiss or even noise coming from my speakers before, but now it's just about dead silent. Another thing that I've noticed, or maybe it's a placebo effect, and I don't want to say with 100% certainty it's true, but I feel, and so do some of the other guys that I've had over here, soundstage seemed a little more open and the highs are a little more cleaner. I popped in a quiet place since I've heard it a hundred times, and right off the bat, I thought it was more open sounding. Again, maybe just a placebo effect, but that's what I heard. I know people say power conditioners are snake oil, yada yada, but from what I can hear, I think it's worth it and that it does work. Now, of course, these two particular pieces are like five grand for the pair. It's not a low budget purchase by any means, and I'm not saying that you need these particular ones. The Panamax that these guys are replacing is like a quarter of the cost. I think it was like 500 bucks, and you can probably get them for a lot cheaper if they're on sale. I know I didn't record the measurements on the Panamax, but the readings were just about the same as the SPR20. The Furman 15i was a bit quieter. I don't think it's $2,200 more quieter, but it is quieter nonetheless. I do think the Panamax, which is a sister brand of Furman, should be more than enough for any system. But for those folks out there that have dropped a lot of spare change on some really high-end equipment, I don't see the reason for not dropping a little bit more for better power management. The Furman brand has been in the business for more than three decades, and they do come with five-year warranties. So there is a little bit of peace of mind there. And just a disclaimer, I won't pay for these myself, so I'm not trying to give you a positive review. If I didn't believe in these, then I wouldn't have made the video. But that's all I've got. What are your thoughts on power conditioners? Do you have one or more? And do you think they're a useful addition to your home theater systems? Leave us a comment down below and let us know. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and share. And if you're not a subscriber, then tap the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next one.